everybody. Um, so, uh, I, I am 3D printing a lizard folk army. Um, I, uh, we, we've been getting really into playing one page rules and I feel like I'm, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. I'll, I'll put chapters down, down here. Um, <laughs> the, I feel like one page rules is like the Age of Sigmar and like 40k pretty much that I always wanted. <laughs> like, um, it's turning into the game that we play. Aside from D&D, &D, like, we have our regular D&D &D sessions in my gaming group, but then, like, One Page Rules is, like, turning into the thing that we really enjoy playing, like, Firefight, um, the, you, it's, like, the Firefight is, like, their kill team, and it's just a scaled-down version of the, the bigger one. You can just add some points and then get up to an army size game, and, like, same thing with the Fantasy. It's just, it's the same thing, like, you, you... If you know how to play one, you know how to play the other, and then they have their version of like Necromunda, and it's like it's the alternative that I always wanted. Um, but uh, so I am three D printing a Saurian, which is like Seraph lizard folk, you know, like their their uh, lizard lizard people army. So I wanted to do some swampy uh, bases for my uh for my army right so i had some like shower thoughts like some ideas that i was kind of kicking around um that uh like <laughs> um you know the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs that was like the highest ratio of birds to one stone uh kills you know or like soup is really or cereal is really soup you know if you think about it um i had like some ideas <laughs> Of like stuff that I wanted to do to make some swampy bases and then I was like I'm just gonna experiment with this stuff it didn't come out quite how I imagined it but I'm super happy with how they look like I love how they look um and uh yeah and so uh what else is I what else did I want to talk about oh yeah about one page rules so I'm just, I'm gonna kind of pump them up a little bit, hype them up a little bit. Um, so if you, um, the rules are all totally free. And then if you want to get into it, if you have a 3D printer, um, if you go on to their Patreon, if you join their Patreon, like you can get all of the files, all of the digital files. If you go to like My Mini Factory or, um, I think they're all, it's, I don't know where else they are, but I know they're all on my mini factory. Um, but if you join the Patreon, the Patreon is like $10 a month. And then um, everything else is free. The rules are all free, but you get, they, they do a release every month and then you get a good chunk of an army that will, they do one fantasy release and then they do one sci-fi release. So you get a good chunk of an army in files every month for ten dollars. Uh, this month, uh, February, it was um, a beastman. They're they're working on a, a beastman army, and then they're also working on um, uh, eternal dynasties. I think is what they they call them, and it's basically Tau. It's like their version of Tau, but you get a, a good chunk of an army every month in files and then you can you know print them out and then they have like contests to like paint them and they have a discord where you can go to find games or like just talk about stuff or whatever and like um i think it's a, just a really awesome community uh so and then um also the, the one other thing is that if you join the Patreon, they've reached like a tier, like a reward tier, where um, everybody who is a part of the Patreon gets 70% off of everything that's in the My Mini Factory store. So like all of the other armies. And um, the, so it like pays for itself pretty much instantly. And you, I mean, that $10 goes like really, really far. Um, like, I, I've been playing the Eternal Dynasties army, and I, I, I love it. I think they're really, really fun to play. 
way more fun than Tau. Um, but anyways, if you, so if you, like, if you want to play the, um, uh, what are they called? The, um, like the Tomb Kings, um, they, they have like done an entire Tomb King army, which is gone, you know, like GW, they don't, they, the Tomb Kings are, are all gone and they were all like metal minis back in the day too. And, um, but they've, they've done an entire like Tomb King kind of army. Uh, and then, um, like they, they show a lot of love to things that don't get love from GW. Like, uh, they don't, um, I, they don't do quite as many, like, Space Marine Battle Brother releases. They do more, like, things like, um, they're planning on, uh, doing a big release of, like, kind of, like, Sisters of Battle, like, that kind of faction. And, like, just showing some love to factions that, um, don't get a lot of love. Like, Tau. <laughs> I was looking at my, um, I dug up some old codexes, and I, because I, I, used to play like Tyranids and then I wanted to play Tau. I wanted a melee army and a shooty army. And uh, they have not changed their sculpts in like 20 years. <laughs> Cause I was looking at these books and then like they still have the same models from 20 years ago. So, so they're, you know, one page rules is showing those some love. They're, uh, they're showing those armies some love. But, uh, but yeah, anyways, let's, do some experimental swampy bases for my Saurian army. Hey everybody, uh, so I'm, uh, been 3D printing like crazy, uh, ever since I got my, my new, uh, resin printer. Um, and I'm working on a, um, uh, lizard folk, um, it's not Seraphon, uh, what do they call them? Well, yeah, I'm working on an army for uh, one page rules. And um, so I have, I, I was doing uh, jungle scatter stuff for these guys. Cause I, you know, I want to use these for um, a couple of my new armies. <laughs> um, but uh, I was messing around with these and I thought, oh, you know, I want to make some like swampy jungle bases for these guys. Uh, and then what I have a bunch of is these little, um, like 32 millimeter lift bases. And then I was thinking, oh, well, I'll just do some like cork bark in there and then just fill this stuff in with like resin and like, you know, different, different stuff so that it kind of pulls up a little bit. What I don't have is, um, for like bigger guys, like, um, uh, you know, hero units or like flyers or, or cavalry or just whatever. Um, I don't have lift bases for them in like standard sizes. I have, you know, um, a few floating around, but they're not, they're like few and far between. And I don't even know where I got some of them from, like what they actually are. So what I'm thinking about doing instead is, um, doing some laser cut ones. Uh, so I've never, I've never actually done any laser cut bases before, but I have a laser cutter. Um, so I can just cut bases out to a standard size and then call it good. Um, and then what I was thinking, what I might actually want to do is build up some, some stuff like cork bark or um, I don't know, something, and then do, uh, like, resin effects around. I just thought that would look really cool. If you could see, like, see the resin up to the, um, barking, barking. No barking. No barking. I know. I know. I know. No barking. No barking, please. Uh-huh. I know. Sorry, my dog uh, lost it. Um, so, what I wanted to do was do uh, like a tape around these or something, or um, I might even have 
something that's like the right size to, uh, or make like a silicone mold or something, you know, just to like pop these guys in, do resin around, and then, um, and then also another thing is that these guys don't fit that good on little 32 millimeter bases. Their feet are a little bit too far apart. So I think that this is like a better size for these guys. Plus I just think it's gonna look really cool. So I wanted to try it. Um, so let's see, I have, this is like three millimeter cork. This stuff is, um, these, these are these are like trivets from Ikea um, of all places. They're like, you get like three of them. They're, they're really cheap. It's like three for, I don't know, I can't remember, three for three dollars or something. But these are in a little bit shorter supply than this stuff and then this is a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna try this first. Um, okay, so. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna kind of go around and just be like really, just do a rough edge. Um, break this stuff up a little bit. I want something for him to stand on, but um, it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to come completely up to the edge. Um, it would be cool if the, the resin was there around the edge instead. Oh, like just too much. <laughs> That's cool. That'll be for this guy. Okay. So, anyways, yeah. I think I'm just going to go around and I'm going to make a bunch of these. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna use some super glue. One of the nice things about cork and MDF is that it loves to be painted. Um, you know, like plastic or resin, you need to hit it with something. Like these, I was, I was using spray paint on these guys because, you know, um, plastic. I mean, well, like metal is so much worse, but so far resin, I have not had any trouble getting paint to stick to it, but you know, fingers crossed, like knock on knock on wood. But uh but yeah, cork and MDF just love to be painted. They kind of actually soak up paint endlessly. So it, it can help to prime them just to um get things to uh just get a layer of paint that's uh kind of um, solid that you can paint on top of. So I probably will go ahead and prime these after I've uh, glued up some bases. But I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do cork because I like cork and I, uh, like you can, so, you know, that's like flat and not that interesting, but you can like gouge at it and then kind of rough it up to make it more interesting, to make it more like, look like a broken kind of rock texture. Or um, use uh, uh, use your bits of like foam board, um, your little cutoffs of foam board. That's a good thing. I, I save this stuff sometimes just for that, to, to make bases with. So anyways, okay, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna make a bunch of these just to play with and and then I will prime them and we will come back to it. Okay, yeah, I, um, I, I'm i a big fan. Like so far, I really like the uh, cork and MDF. Um, so I'm gonna save these little bits to these little leftover bits to make other stuff with too, uh, just to, for like little rocks or whatever. Um, but uh, so, speaking of little rocks, what I have here is, um, this is a uh, kitty litter. <laughs> um, so kitty litter, you can get a giant bag of it for like a buck or a buck fifty. Um, 
more, you know, like a lifetime supply. And uh, unless you have cats. Um, so what it, what it does is it, it soaks up, um, you, yeah, you get the idea. It soaks up stuff. So, um, it makes a nice basing material because it, uh, wants to stick to things. And then it also soaks up paint really well. And then I have some, uh, super, super fine grit sand that I sifted out. Um, so I'm going to go around and I'm going to do a few little, little rocks kind of here and there. Need a fresh bottle of super glue. So, just plop, plop them down and then I can go around, um, kind of sprinkle some sand around the sides to soak up any of the squeeze out. It'll make it look a little more natural. And uh, yeah, it's starting to look like a, uh, like a swamp, more interesting. And then I think I'm gonna fill in around here with um, do some, some sand around the sides too, but I'm gonna use uh, PVA glue to do that because I can push it around with a, a paintbrush and then super glue it. You do not want to get it into a paintbrush. It will not come out. So, yeah, I'm going to do this too. And I forgot to mention that these are 32 millimeter bases. Um, I think that they are kind of like the perfect size for these guys, um, especially the, the bigger, um, the bigger uh, like warriors. It's, I, I keep wanting to call them Seraphon. They're not Seraphon. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, like that's like, they have their feet kind of spread out perfectly to fit on a 32 millimeter base and it doesn't have the lips on it. So that's kind of like the perfect size. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to go around and do that on these two. And then I'm going to put some PVA on there. Okay. So before I, um, <clears throat> uh, have an idea, I have some ideas and stuff that I want to do with this stuff. Um, so I was going to use some sand to like go in here <clears throat> and fill in around these bases, around the cork, but I, have, I want to try something else. Uh, and then, so since all of these guys have these poses where their feet are like spread way apart, and basically I'm just going to kind of rough up some of this part that's in the middle. Uh, scrape away at that a little bit just to kind of create some more interesting looking texture uh, and then just leave a spot for their for their feet to go in there so just rough that up a little bit and then like any hard edges like this I can just kind of you know take them take them down a little bit make it look a little more natural as it like slopes into the um, where I want my swamp stuff to be. So yeah, instead of putting the sand around to fill in around the edges, I'm just going to kind of knock down the sides of these. And then, uh, I should let this stuff dry. I should let this stuff dry before I do this. Um, okay. Yeah, I have another idea. Another thing that I want to try, I'm going to let these dry and I'm going to work on something else while they're all, while that's super glue is kind of doing its thing. Um, okay, so what I want to do 
is I'm gonna try and make some some tufts of uh, like static grass without a static grass applicator um, that are gonna be like longer that'll kind of stick up out of there. Okay, so um, I uh, I went around on these and then kind of roughed up the cork a little bit. Uh, doesn't have to be flat at all where little feet are gonna get glued down or I mean it doesn't really need to like it can be have some texture to it so um went around and did that on these let them dry and stuff and then um what I was thinking was that if I go around and like tape up the sides and then put resin in these then I can take like little you know little bits of whatever and kind of just put them in there and they will you know they will stick in there um but what i was thinking what i wanted to try and i might have forgotten to mention this but like i just had a whole bunch of ideas with these like shower thoughts that i wanted to try um i wanted to try making some little static grass tufts with um the hot glue gun uh so yeah i've got um some little pieces of plastic plants. Um, I've got little bits of like dried moss. Um, grab my uh, my static grass. Um, I have some different colors of static grass and then I, one other thing that I got at the, the hobby store was um, I found these little cattail things. Um, and I just thought they were cool. They're a little too big, but you could easily make something like this too with like, you could take like a, a used up um, like broom or something, take some little pieces of the broom off and then just like glue um, a little piece of, uh, or like some sawdust to the tops of these. But I figured they're cheap and They've already, oops, they've already done all that for me. Um, so I'm just gonna use these. So these are, these are a little too big, right? But what I can do is I can kind of trim them down a little bit. Um, maybe even thin these out a little. Um, so, yeah, you can just cut them off at like the right size. You can even maybe make like two plants out of these. Um, so I kind of, I trim it, trim it down, right? So it's like the right size for, for my mini. And then maybe even a little smaller. And then I'm gonna put a little tiny dot of hot glue down. Stick that in there. I can get it to stand up on its own. Perfect. Okay. And then now I'm gonna put some static grass around it. pretty good um I like it so and then I, what I want to do in here too is put some like I think I'm, I'm gonna paint these so I'm just gonna prime these real quick and then use um, some stuff to make like moss and then it's this different stuff in there and then I'm gonna put some little tufts down uh, 
So I'm gonna make some more of these, just make a little, just take a little tiny dot of hot glue and then put some stuff in it. And then sprinkle, uh, put static grass around it. This works pretty good. I mean, considering that I've just never taken the jump to make, to get a, uh, a, um, like a flock box, something to make, um, static grass tufts with, but I do have them. It's just like, they're so expensive and I think it's just like kind of a silly investment if for, for like a gamer, you know, if I was like, if I was a model railroad guy, I might, I might do it. I might get one, but considering that I use this stuff for, for games and then I just don't think I would really use it. So, but this, this part, the glossy, um, hot glue, you know, is not going to, uh, really show through the, um, the resin, or if it does, it won't, it won't matter. Um, so. Mm, not perfect, but. I like it. I, I think that, that looks pretty good. That looks, that I would, I would like to get more, uh, grass on there. But I'm gonna keep messing with this, see if I can get some kind of a technique down. Okay, I've been playing with this a little bit. So the, um, the static grass, you know, it's like, this stuff is just problematic. It's a little hard to work with, I think. Plus it's like hobby herpes, it just, it gets everywhere. Um, so what, what I, um, what I've been doing, or what, what seems to work the best is, um, I'm just going to make a little dot and then, uh, I'm going to take a, like a pinch of this, of this stuff and then just kind of work it in there. And then uh, that kind of makes a little um, focus, focus right there. It's right there. That makes a little, you know, tuft thing. It looks pretty good. So I think that's the way, that's what I'm gonna do with these. Um, until I actually invest in a real like static grass applicator. That's how I'm gonna do, uh, how I'm gonna make these. So anyways, yeah, it's pretty fun though. Pretty fun to make. Um, just a little teeny tiny dot of glue. And then kind of just mash the grass in around it. Okay, yeah, um, that works pretty good. I mean, like, for making little tufts, I think that these, um, these little bits of this, uh, this moss stuff, probably, they came out, like, these, uh, tried to make some little, you know, uh, some little plants, like, cattail kind of things that were poking out. I think they look the worst. But these, um, these little, like I can get multiple, um, little plants out of these because they're just too big. So I chop them down and then, you know, get a few out of there. Um, but what I think I'm going to do, it looks really good for the, uh, the static grass though. 
this that's like the look that I'm going for something that will just um, be like poking out of the, the water so that's a that's like the, the look I was going for so I'm pretty happy with that and then um, what I think I'm gonna try though is I'm gonna try sticking putting resin in these and then like uh, popping some of these in around it and uh, okay so I'm gonna take these outside and I'm just gonna bomb them with some spray paint before I go on to the next part okay so uh, I took these guys outside hit them with some spray paint um, and uh, I'm I'm a, a big fan of this stuff this um, Rust-Oleum chalky finish uh, uh, you know they come in different colors but this one has like kind of a slate like chalky chalkboard charcoal finish yeah say that three times fast but um, it's uh, it only has like a little bit of texture to it kind of and uh, it's like perfect for making terrain stuff and it's like four dollars a can it has really really good coverage they have uh, good nozzles and, uh, it's good stuff so anyways um, now what I want to do is I'm just gonna do like, oh, geez, I'm just gonna do a dry brush with some uh, like cheapo craft paint um, so let's see I've got a uh, full cart prairie sage and then I've got full cart iced coffee and I actually really like both of these colors and you know again like these are like 50 cents 80, 85 cents a tube um, at like you know uh, Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's you know those kind of places so just gonna put a little bit of this stuff down uh, so the the painting part is not gonna be like the painting part is gonna be kind of secondary I want to I want to do more um, uh, which we call it I kind of want to focus more on flocking to give these some interesting kind of uh, give them an interesting look so I'm just gonna use a, a makeup brush uh, and then you know these have like really really soft bristles they're really good for just dry brushing just gonna mix some some paint in there in the brush and do a uh, a dry brush, a little too much paint off. Get a little more brown in there. this to look more like down here to look more like mud kind of but then that's gonna that's gonna be flocked um, so yeah I'm just gonna go around on the tops of these and kind of dry brush over brush and then when you're doing stuff like this when it's top down, you're supposed to work in circles because the light is not coming in a direction. It's kind of like all over, like straight down. All right, and then now um, to do flocking stuff. Um, when you're when you're doing flocking and then you're working with like static grass, and then I want to use some of this really fine foam don't use super glue because it can have a reaction with this stuff and it'll like start to like smoke and burn um, <laughs> learn out the hard way so <clears throat> yeah this is um this is just like a really really super fine grit kind of flock 
think that this is woodland scenics. It might be burnt grass or I'm not sure. But um, so I'm gonna use um, PVA glue. So this is just like school glue, um, bookbinder glue, uh, polybone acetate, <laughs> Bulmers. I like Eileen's tacky glue. It's just craft glue. So, okay, um, I am gonna water that down a little bit. Uh, let's see, just got some, a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna use a brush. I'm not gonna use a good brush, I'm gonna use like a craft, craft brush. Um, so I think I want this like maybe half strength. Um, so that it's a little more runny <clears throat> and it'll kind of seep into the cracks a little bit more. That's about right. And then um, I'm going to paint this in where I want to do some interesting flocking stuff. Uh, so I've got a few different kinds of flock that I want to use and I'm going to cover up spots where, you know, there's like stuff showing but it can, it can, it doesn't need to be, like, it's just going to kind of be all over. That's totally fine, like, I'll show you. What I'm thinking in a minute. I just want to leave like the tops of these little rocks and stuff. I don't want to cover everything with scenery glue. Otherwise I would probably just spray this with um, some uh, like scenery glue. And then drop them in the, <clears throat> drop them in the flock. Okay, so. What I want to do is um, I'm going to sprinkle some flock on these. And then if this is not totally sealed down, if like some of this stuff floats to the top of the resin, totally cool. Like no problem. Because it'll look like little bits of like pond scum kind of floating on the top. Um, <clears throat> oh, I got to put my my tufts in too. Let's see. Mm. Just put a little guy on this one. Get in there. Might actually use super glue just for these. Okay. Back to my uh, scenery glue. Uh, so, let's see, what else do I have? I have, oh, I have um, like spent uh, tea leaves. Um, let me put some of this in there too. Just kind of mix it all in there together. Get that effect of like, um, sort of uh, that stuff that's at the bottom of a swamp, you know, like in a, <laughs> uh, like dead leaves and pond scum and all that stuff just kind of floating around in there. 
feel like Bob Ross, like miniature painting. Like, got a little bit of pond scum kind of floating around, and then he needs a little buddy. Put a little bit of tea leaves in there for some dead leaves. A little bit of pond scum. Yeah, and I think if this stuff actually comes up to the surface and floats a little bit, it'll look really cool. So. All right, I'm just gonna go around and do the rest of these guys. All right, so now, uh, moment of truth. Can I put the resin around these guys, around the bases? Um, okay, so what I have is um, UV resin. <clears throat> and then this is just like, this is like 3D printer resin, it's UV sensitive. And then I have a, um, where's my flash? I have like a UV uh, flashlight thing. Oh, here it is. So then when I turn this on or like um, any kind of UV light or just leaving them out in the sun is going to harden it, but this stuff is, it's kind of cool. It's, it's fun to play with. Um, so, <clears throat> all right, first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and uh, I'm just gonna make sure that there's no, there's nothing sticking to the sides of these. Um, Cause I wanna leave it this like chalky finish, the uh, charcoal kind of finish. So, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of run my thumb around these just to make sure there's nothing sticking to there. <clears throat> and then uh, I'm gonna take uh, some scotch tape and I'm pretty sure, I have not tried this, but I'm pretty sure that, um, do I might wanna put a little more, well, it's gonna get filled with resin anyways. Um, <clears throat> So I have not tried this, but I think that the scotch tape is gonna be enough because this the, the UV resin is pretty thick and goopy. And uh, so yeah, I've just got regular like clear uh, scotch tape. And then I'm gonna go around and, okay, how am I gonna do this? Let's see. A little spot. All right. If I put these down like so, ideally, I would have, I could make a mold that I could pop these down into something that would um, have like this size of a. Uh, like a 32 millimeters, kind of around. I don't know, I think that's working. So, <clears throat> the thing is, is that the resin is going to sort of take on the shape of this mold. So, if, and if it isn't, uh, what I can do too is just kind of build up some little thin layers of this stuff. Huh, I might try that instead. In my mind, this part worked way better. This is like the first failure part, is not having something to build up around the sides. <clears throat> Is it worth it to make a mold? Do I have something that's like the right size? I'm going to look. I'm going to make sure I'm going to see if I have something that's like the right size to kind of pop these down into to just get get a nice little lip of resin. All right. I looked around. I don't have anything that's like the right size. I could just make some molds that would be 
um, the right size, like, square one for these that they have the little lip, like, built into them, and then the resin can just run into there. But I am, like, so in love with how these look. I'm just, I'm in love with the idea of just cutting my own, making my own laser bases, and then just doing my whole army like that. So I think um, what I'm gonna do instead is just do a little bit of like standing water, um, kind of like, kind of glossy stuff, just kind of covering the surface. But you know, like this is a, this is all experimental. So, all right, I'm gonna use some UV resin and then I'm, I have all the windows closed and then all the lights that I have on, none of them are UV, like they're like fluorescent. It's uh, a different spectrum. So I'm just going to mix up enough to do a few, and it is pretty thick and goopy, so, um, alright, so, and then I have some, what this is, is this is just resin dye, like you could just use like alcohol inks or, um, so, you know, uh, something that will mix easily with resin, um, alcohol, uh, is, or resin is um, alcohol soluble, so I just happen to have these. A little bit, a little drop of dye or you know paint or whatever goes a very long way. I just want some like kind of blue green looking water. Bit. Mm, it feels like it is hardening. I know it's, I know there's no UV in here, but it's, it sort of feels like thick and goopy. This might be a job for like Mod, Mod Podge gloss or something, something else. This might not be the right thing for this. Let me give it a try. Try just putting some on with this like toothpick. Yeah, it doesn't want to run around like water. It does look cool though, I like that. You should maybe keep some of that like liquid look, just kind of standing water. And then these are supposed to be like swampy, not, um, you know, deep, like standing water. It's, uh, they aren't, uh, merfolk or whatever, like deepkin, whatever they call them or something like that, that army, whatever's going on with them. They're, uh, they're swampy, uh, swampy lizard folk. I do love the actual lore that they're um, good, good demons made by a uh, an an Earth uh, deity. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean it's a cool effect. It's not it's not deep water like what I was picturing, but still like it.
Alright, and then I'll go ahead and like harden some of this stuff so you can see what that looks like. What I wanted to do though was like stick some of these out of it. I will try that. I'll try that. Because they should stick in there just fine. Hide that. Okay. And do some UV on there. And it sort of just hardens like instantly as soon as you hit it with UV. Or hardens up enough. And then you can leave it in a windowsill later and it will totally harden. Yeah, I like it. I dig it. I think that looks cool. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with these guys. I will show you the end product. All right, so uh, I left those out in the windowsill for a while, and now it's that's totally cured, but it still has that kind of glassy um, look, fresh water look, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm like totally in love with how these look. I think that even the idea of having the the rims popping up or like or having some resin that you could see through, um, I think I actually like this a little better. I like the just kind of uh, shallow standing water look. There was one where I kind of sprinkled a little bit of the the moss kind of like on top of it, like that. <laughs> and uh, I really like that look. I like, I like the like kind of floaty pond scum look. So anyways, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to um, do the rest of my army like this. Like I, uh, yep, I, I like it a lot. And I really like that I've made all of these completely in-house <laughs> like these are 3d printed these are laser cut mdf and then yeah just made them all myself so anyways yeah um <clears throat> thanks for watching you guys i'll uh i'll put some better pictures up and uh i will see you in the next one